Nicholas Samuel Markowitz was born on September 19, 1984, in West Hills, Los Angeles, California, to his parents Jeff and Susan Markowitz. He had two older half-siblings, Ben and Leah. Ben will play a big part in Nick's story. Nick was described as a kind, gentle, soft-spoken boy, who aside from not liking sports. He was a pretty typical teenager. On August 5th, Nick came home and had an argument with his parents and his sister Leah thought he appeared to be high and noticed a large bulge in his pocket and confronted him on it. Instead of having a fight late at night, his parents decided that they would all go to sleep and talk in the morning. By the time Jeff and Susan woke up, Nick had flown the coop to avoid a battle. Nick was walking only a mile from home when a white van approached him, two young men jumped out, while one remained in the driver's seat inside, and they proceeded to attack Nick and shove him in their van and kidnap him. The three young men we are speaking of are 20-year-old Jesse Rugg, William Skidmore, and Jesse James Hollywood. There were two witnesses to the attack. Pauline and Mahoney and her children were driving home from church when Pauline saw a group of young men attacking a young boy. She said, they were beating him up pretty badly. A lot of them threw him into the van, and then they jumped in, shut the door, and the van started moving. This was before everyone had cell phones on them, so Pauline sped home, reciting the license plate number over and over again out loud, having her children do it with her, as to not forget. There was a police follow-up, but the 911 call was coded incorrectly. It was coded as an assault and not kidnapping, so when the police scanned the area, they saw no victim around and that was that. Another police call had come in about the incident. Rosalia de la Cruz Jata was a student at the time, whose parents lived in West Hills. She had called the police from a cell phone within a minute of seeing the attack. Rosalia said, at first I thought it was some kind of gang initiation, but when I saw them pick him up and throw him into a van, that's what I thought warranted the call. Police had failed to track down the van. Rosalia later testified that even though she had given the 911 operator her name and phone number, no one from the police department contacted her for further questioning. So was this a random kidnapping or a gang initiation? The answer is no, these guys were friends of Nick's older half-brother Ben. Ben and Hollywood, who had played Little League together, coached by Hollywood's drug-dealing daddy, Jack Hollywood, were in a full-on feud because Ben owed Hollywood a $1,200 drug debt. Hollywood was a mid-level drug dealer that took on the drug business from his dad. He had his friends out selling drugs for him. He seemed to enjoy it when they were in debt to him, because he could hold that power over them, getting them to do tasks for him until they could pay him back. Considering in reality Hollywood was about only 5 feet 4 inches tall, he seemed to be really trying to overcompensate. The person who Hollywood piled on the most was 20-year-old Ryan Hoyt. Ben was not one to stand down, so when a drug deal fell through on his end, and Hollywood came to collect, Ben basically told him to shove it and started a war. August 6th is where we find Hollywood packing up his house and moving with the white van when they spot Nick walking and Hollywood gets an idea to steal him. Hollywood, Rugg, and Skidmore then went and picked up another friend, Brian Affronti, and drove to Santa Barbara just a few hours away. The group told Nick why they were holding him, and Nick initially flipped out so they incapacitated him with drugs and alcohol. Hollywood said, if you run, I'll break your teeth. Nick eventually decided to cooperate, because he didn't want to make trouble for his big brother. While in Santa Barbara, Nick met Rugg's friends Graham Presley, Natasha Adams Young, and Kelly Carpenter and went to several different house parties with them. Reports indicate that many witnesses, parents, and teens all saw Nick with the others, but did not realize anything was up. Also, many people knew Nick had been kidnapped but did not notify the police because he appeared to be safe playing video games and having lots of fun. While Rugg was monitoring Nick, Hollywood was trying to assess the situation elsewhere. He went to speak to his father's attorney, Stephen Hogg. Hollywood asked Hogg about legal repercussions for kidnapping someone and Hogg said if your friends hurt this guy, or if your friends asked for money from him, they can get life which was not what Hollywood wanted to hear. While this was going on, Nick's parents were understandably freaking out and looking for their son. His parents filed a missing persons report on August 8, while Nick was being escorted by Hollywood's posse to the Lemon Tree Inn in Santa Barbara. They were calling it Nick's final party. 
he would be returned home in the morning, and everyone wanted to celebrate. That's definitely not what happened. Hollywood was freaking out after the visit with his father's attorney, and in his mind he thought it was better to just get rid of the kid, than to let him go and risk him talking to his parents, or worse the police. Since Ryan Hoyt was always looking for ways to pay off his debts to Hollywood, he was quick to agree when Hollywood showed up and said there was a mess that needed to be cleaned up, and that his debt would be cleared. Hollywood had with him a bag containing an assault pistol known as a TECDC-9, a model which was used in the Columbine shooting. But wait, there's more, this gun was extra special, it had been modified into a fully automatic machine gun, capable of spraying 12 rounds a second. Back at the Lemon Tree Inn, the party was in full effect. Nick was enjoying himself, given the situation, people were taken to his kind nature, they called him Stolen Boy. But around 11 p.m. when the party was hopping, Rugg announced that someone was going to come and pick up Nick to safely return him home. Hoyt arrived, but he was not there to take Nick home. While Nick relaxed at the hotel with Graham Presley, Hoyt and Rugg went back to Rugg's house to get shovels. Rugg states he refused to get out of the car and get the shovels and made Hoyt go get them himself. When they returned Hoyt needed to know a private spot to take Nick to. Rugg said he didn't know and told Hoyt to ask Graham, who up until this point hadn't been involved in anything. Rugg threatened Graham with the gun and drove him to Lizard's Mouth Trail in the Santa Inez Mountains. There Hoyt made Graham dig what would become Nick's grave. They returned to the hotel and then Hoyt, Rugg, and Graham drove Nick to the mountains. Rugg and Hoyt walked Nick up the trail to where the shallow grave was. Rugg allegedly told Nick I'm not going to hurt you. To which Nick replied, I know. Rugg then bound Nick's hands behind his back and covered his mouth and eyes with duct tape. Hoyt then hit Nick in the back of the head with a shovel, knocking him into the grave, and shot him nine times with Hollywood's gun. He died instantly. Hoyt then hid the gun under Nick's body, and they covered him with dirt and sticks. According to police interviews, Rugg got physically ill, but Hoyt just stared in awe at what he had done. Four days later, on August 12, 2000, hikers and a small film crew found Nick's badly decomposing body and was located near a popular trail. On August 16, 2000, Hoyt, Rugg, Skidmore and Presley were all arrested, but Hollywood went on the run, with the help of several people. Here's where we can talk about how dumb Hollywood was. He fled to Brazil and impregnated a local, because of a case he had heard about where a train robber, Ronnie Biggs, fled to Brazil and fathered a child to avoid deportation. That didn't work for Hollywood. The law had since changed, and Hollywood had entered Brazil on a false Canadian passport. Therefore, he was extradited back to California to finally stand trial. Ryan Hoyt, aged 20 at the time of the murder, was charged with the first-degree murder of Nick. He was convicted on November 21, 2001, and sentenced to death on December 9, 2001. As of 2019, the new governor in California had granted a temporary reprieve to California's 737 death row inmates, which includes Hoyt. So he's in prison for life without the possibility of parole. Jesse Rugg, aged 20 at the time of the murder was charged with aiding in the kidnap and murder of Nick. He was convicted in 2002 of aggravated kidnapping for ransom or extortion with special circumstances and was sentenced to life in prison. After seven years, after being granted parole on his second try, Rugg was released from prison on October 24, 2013. William Skidmore and Graham Presley were charged with kidnapping and robbery. In September 2002, both were sentenced to nine years in state prison as part of a plea bargain. Both were released in April 2009. Jesse James Hollywood, aged 20 at the time of the murder, was arrested in Saquarima, Brazil after being on the FBI's most wanted list for five years. In 2009, Hollywood was convicted of kidnapping and first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Nick's mother Susan wrote a book, My Stolen Son. She talks about how she was hospitalized 13 times for suicide attempts after Nick's death, before Hollywood's capture. She said she finally held on because she was determined to be alive when they were all held accountable. That brings us to the end of today's video, what do you think of this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section.